Hello YouTube and thank you for tuning in to yet another Hanging with Hebe video. Hey, we're going to continue on with our blueprint reading for welders and metal fabricators and today we're going to be talking about a bill of materials. Now I don't mind telling you guys, bill of materials is kind of deep and it's going to take more than just one video. So I'm going to try and keep them short and interesting for you so that you can go ahead and follow along with Hanging with Hebe as we talk about bill of materials. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's take a look here. First things first, I want to tell you is that a bill of materials can be in-depth. It can be as simple as uh, nuts and screws and bolts and types of material that you're going to be using, or it can even be as in-depth as the type of caulking that you're going to use around a window or, or the type of lubricant. Some bill of materials can come and they can be as big as, as you will find in a notebook or even bigger. Sometimes bill of materials have a whole other section to themselves. So if you're in the welding or construction trade or in the fabrication trade, whenever you uh, bid on a project, you definitely want to take a look at the bill of materials so you'll know how much things are going to cost. You're never going to find on a bill of materials um, a term like a spring. That, that means nothing, but you might see on a bill of materials a very specific type and size of spring. And that's the kind of thing that we're going to be looking at. So let's take a look here on the whiteboard of knowledge behind me here. And we're going to talk about a bill of materials. And we're going to start right in on what they're for and how they're used. And um, then we're going to go into the material specifications themselves. Hang with Hebe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to talk about bill of materials. Number one, a bill of materials must be very accurate. It doesn't do you any good if it has down there a quantity of 15 and what you really need are 18. So it must be very, very accurate. It must be clear, very clear. It must be easy to read. It must follow the, the rules of bill of materials so that when you know how thick something is, how wide, how long something is, how many threads per inch. And it also must be extremely specific. It's got to be specific. It just can't say um, one quarter inch nut, one quarter inch bolt. It's got to be one quarter inch grade A bolt, 20 threads per inch or something of that nature. It will be very specific. If it's a spring, it will, be, it will tell you exactly what size spring. If it is to be welded, it will tell you exactly how what electrode is to be used, even though you won't find that probably in the bill of materials. But it has to be extremely specific. I also want to point out a couple of things here is that as a welder, if you're going to be the welder or the fabricator on the bench, it's not your job to create a bill of materials. That will come from somebody else higher up. That will come from your engineering department. Um, some other per per person, uh, maybe a, the guy in the stock room. It's hard to say who's going to be doing that for you. In many cases, the bill of materials is, is a supply list of dimensions and, and a number of pieces required. In other times, it will be um, exact sizes. Uh, one quarter inch by three inch by five inch flat bar, something of that nature. So keep that in mind as we continue on with our bill of materials and next I'm going to show you how to write a bill of materials for, for material for steel. Alright ladies and gentlemen if you remember from our previous videos on blueprint reading we talked about a title block and this title block is the first place we're going to go looking for our bill of materials. Number one we're going to identify this as a T-joint. So we know that this is the only thing that we're working with right now is this particular part, part, part and that's called a T-joint. The order number, the order number would be in here, whatever you desire. But here's the part that we're talking about. The number required, 10. 10 is the number required. And that is the very first thing that we're going to write down on our bill of materials. Under the uh, column where it says quantity, we're going to write 10. So let's go ahead and I'll uh, zoom in and we'll develop a bill of materials. All right, YouTube, let's go ahead and focus up here on this simple drawing that I provided for you today. Um, the drawing is called the T-joint. If we look down here, uh, we can see that we have an order number, name of part, number of required. 
this area right here, our title block, is very important. So we want to start off right with that as we begin to read Blueprint Reading for Welders and Metal Fabricators and we talk about Bill of Materials. Now let's take a look here. Very simple T-joint here. Top, front, right side view. We can tell from this piece right here, from our, our, our top view, that it is eight inches long. Okay? Now let's take a look down here at our width. I don't know about you, but personally I think that's a little cluttered. I would have taken these dimensions here and possibly put them down here where they'd be a little more uh, understandable and not quite so cluttered. So whenever you're doing your drawings, make sure you keep that in mind. Don't clutter up your drawing with unnecessary dimensions or dimensions that are going to be cluttered. You'll see that this one is inch and one quarter, one half, and inch and one quarter. So to find out the width of these, we have to add these three dimensions together. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, and one half, and that's going to come out to be um, three inches. Inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter being inch and a half, one half inch being three. Let's take a look over here at the top front right side view. We see that this part here is two and one quarter inches tall. And this one over here is one quarter of an inch thick. Now, so far we have all the basic dimensions that we're going to need for this particular uh, project. Number one, there's two parts. This part here and this part here. This part is one half inch thick, two and one quarter inches tall, and eight inches long. So it's going to have its own separate piece. This piece here, if you want to call it the base, we know that it's going to be three inches wide, eight inches long, and one quarter inch thick. Now, notice how I just told you that. That's exactly how most people would write this down if they were writing something out to give to the steel supplier. That's not quite the way we, we write it. We always write thickness first, then length by width. Let's take a look over here though into our title block. We've got a very good piece of information here. The number required 10. So hang with Hevé as I show you how we're going to write out this uh, bill of materials for this very simple project. Okay YouTube, let's go ahead and wrap up this particular lesson on bill of materials for blueprint reading for welders and metal fabricators. Now I've taken the uh, liberty of labeling the two parts, A and B, and then I've gone ahead and developed a bill of materials for them. So let's take a look at what I've done up here. Part A, part B. Over here at my bill of materials, I have listed part number A and part number B. Knowing from my title block that the number required was 10, I can enter 10 into my quantity size, side, and when it comes to size, I know that this is going to be one quarter inch thick by three inches wide by eight inches long, and it's going to be MSP. This is a new abbreviation for you, and that stands for mild steel plate. So make sure that you get that. You also might just see mild steel, but it's going to be mild steel plate. Let's take a look at B. Well, B, we already know that the quantity is going to be 10. So I've entered 10. But here it's a little different. Here the size is 1 half inch by 2 and 1 quarter inches by 8 inches long, also of mild steel plate. Now this is very important that you designate MSP. What if somebody built this out of aluminum? That wouldn't certainly fly, would it? So this is our wrap up for this particular lesson. And we're gonna have some more of these, I don't mind telling you, but this is the wrap up for this particular lesson for Bill of Materials, simple that it may be. Listen, I hope that you're taking a few notes as you go along. Maybe in your notebook, you're making this very same sketch. 
and you're, and you're looking at it, you're thinking about it, you're working right along with Hebe as we go ahead and progress. You'll notice that I keep using top, front, right side view, uh, size, dimensions, location dimensions, and also we're able to develop our title block. We know what the part number is, we know what the numbers require, and over here we now have a bill of materials. If you're a high school or a college instructor and you're having a competition in your class, this is a good one to set up. It's very, very, very simple. Um, you can grade how well they do on their locations. You can do how well they do on cutting to their sizes. And uh, it makes a nice little competition. So, until next time, you two. Yeah, that's right. You know what I want you to do. I want you to reach over there. I want you to hit that like, share, subscribe button. Hey, I also appreciate if you leave me a comment on what you think here, because I don't know what you're thinking. There's thousands of you out there, and I don't know what you're thinking. So let me know what you want to see or what you hear or what do you think is going on here, if you have any questions here. Now, when you like, share, subscribe, I want you to go down there and I want you to hit that alarm button. That alarm button's going to tell you every time I come on with a YouTube video and you know, I got a lot of different stuff going on. Comedy, daily life, but most importantly is my welding right now for you guys. So, until next time YouTube, you know what I want you to do. Like, share, subscribe, comment, but I'll catch you outside in the shop.